So the big word this week is defund, as in defund the police. The idea here is if a municipality reduces the budget of its police force, the people who are usually subject to its predations, mostly black, brown, and indigenous people, plus the homeless and mentally ill, trans people, would be safer. On the whole, it's probably good logic. It's better to have a small tiger in your bedroom than a fully grown one. But surely, if there's a tiger in your room at all, the ideal is to get rid of it. To abolish it? I'm Chris, and this is what had to be said. If you're one of those people who really still doesn't quite understand the call to reduce the power of the police, allow me to explain. Millions of people, probably the majority of the world, experience the police not as a benign force that protects them, but as an occupying army. They're the outside agitators, to repurpose the media term. They harass, kidnap, assault, and kill people every day. That's the bulk of their job. The things they do don't need to be done, so their jobs shouldn't exist. It's true that sometimes they're called to the scene of a crime and they do the valuable work of taking notes and never following them up, but we can probably do without that as well. What's more, the police enforce the law. Why would we want that? The law is just powerful people's justifications for using force against us, usually to line their own pockets. They use violence against you because you broke the law, regardless of whether you're actually a threat to anyone. We shouldn't have to spend our lives in prisons because some asshole wrote a law. We should be eliminating laws, too. That's why I don't talk about crime. Crime is just whatever the law prohibits, mostly non-violent and victimless practices. Not coming to a full stop at a stop sign is a crime. Beating your head in and then throwing you in a cage is legal, at least, if you have a uniform. Crime is not the problem. We want to be safe. If you want people to keep you safe, you could do better than people whose jobs are to do the opposite. And there's some urgency in this call to abolish the police. People are tired of being harassed and killed for their skin color, or sprayed with tear gas for demanding justice from a system that's not designed for justice. But also because police are targeting protesters for revenge. That's quite common. That's what they do. Criminalize dissent and then punish it severely. That's why they film you. That's why you should wear a mask. Arguments about apples in various stages of decay ignore the fact that policing is a system. And when people serve systems, their individual intentions are meaningless. I explained the other day that reforms have not worked because change needs to be systemic. You can't reform the police into being kind, caring, and non-violent, for the same reason you can't convert the tiger in your room into a vegan. It's just not in the nature of the beast. Their jobs should be gone. Don't turn police into social workers, either. Hire social workers. Don't empower social workers with guns and bear spray and legal immunity because we don't want social workers turning into cops. And defunding the police is, you know, maybe a step in the right direction, but it won't necessarily make them any less dangerous, because they would still be empowered to use force on us, to force us to conform to the law. Often when you defund some state program, it ends up being privatized. Privatizing the police would probably mean people with lots of money would have their own private armies, while people on the bottom would continue to die under the capitalist system. Or it could mean the police make up that much more of their revenue through civil asset forfeiture. You know, when they steal things from civilians by saying those things 
were somehow involved in a crime. We could do a lot better than private police. So if not defunding and privatizing the police, how to abolish them? The point is to shift resources away from policing and back to the community they were taken from. Communities, not the state, should be empowered to assist, support, prevent, and intervene when necessary. Local people can create a space for everyone to access mental health care, victim support, reconciliation, and so on. The main objection to all this seems to be, without police, how can we be safe from the really dangerous people? Well, I can give you two answers. First, what are they doing about it now? Aside from the, the police being some of the most dangerous people. Like, you know, they'll tell you, well, what if you were being raped? Wouldn't you want the police to put the rapist in prison? Do they do that now? Most rapists and domestic abusers are walking around free. But police will invade your home, shoot your dog, throw you on the ground, and then put a gun to your head because you had some illegal plant in your house. Police don't prevent violence. They're its biggest perpetrator. Second, violence has causes. If we care about addressing those causes, throwing people in jail should be the last resort, not the first. Are you afraid of getting attacked or robbed? How about providing resources to ensure everyone's needs are met so they don't have to rob people? That could mean creating community gardens, creating work that they can do for the community. There's plenty of work to be done educational resources, art and sports programs, whatever you think your community needs. We should also be elevating people so that everyone has a say in local governance. And by the way, notice I said governance, not government. If you don't know the difference, check it out. Let's have unarmed teams of mediators we can access immediately. There could be different types, some for resolving domestic violence, uh, others just for women, others for kids. How about creating spaces for restorative justice, where people have the chance to atone for what they did and reintegrate back into the community? And yes, I know, not everyone can be reintegrated, but most can. If there's still a need to lock someone up because they're a threat to others and maybe themselves, okay, that's a very small minority of the population, especially when we take care of everyone. So join the call for abolishing the police and the prison and the supremacy of the law. Let's empower our communities, not some occupiers. Let's organize unarmed groups who can solve problems rather than unaccountable killers with badges. Let's work for our safety and freedom rather than someone else's law and order. Let's hit like on this video and share it with your friends. Yeah, thought I'd try. See you next time.